these pepper plants you see growing behind me here, those were all grown outdoors using hydroponics. So if you're looking for a good way to do that, let me take you through my setup and show you how I did it. All right, well, there are a couple of different methods you can use to grow hydroponically outdoors. Last year, I tried the DWC, direct water column method, and I had some issues with it. It did, it did work well, but it had, was not without problems. So yeah, I tried this way this year and it worked a lot better for me. And the way I did it this year was I grew in coconut coir and using a drip system that's automated on a timer. So it's pretty much been hands off. I don't have to water these things uh, daily or anything like that. The, the feeder system takes care of that and it just works great for me. And so let me show you what I got here. Okay, so I built this bucket planter here to house all my buckets. Now this is a completely optional step. You do not need this, but I just thought it looked nicer than having a bunch of buckets in my yard. And so you could skip this stuff if you'd like. But what you will need are buckets. Now I have my nutrient reservoir inside the garage. So what I did was I just drilled a couple of holes and I ran these two lines out of the garage. Uh, this one here is so I can use I can hook up a garden hose and fill my tanks without running the hose into the garage. And then this one uh, is my feed line coming out to the bucket planter. So inside, I'll take you in there in a minute, but there's valves which I can valve off to choose which line the flow rate goes through. And so I ran that line over here to my bucket planter. And as you can see here, I have it tee off. Now what this does, this tubing makes a complete loop around the whole bucket system. That's very important if you want even water distribution. Now having that tubing looping around complete, making a complete loop is an important step because if you don't do that, you're gonna end up with uneven pressure at some of your drippers. If you just ran the lines straight out and terminated at a point and then tap all your drip tubes off of that, then the ones closer to the reservoir are going to get better pressure and the ones at the end are going to get less pressure and it's going to result in some plants you know getting started for nutrients potentially and so you want to do that make a complete loop around the system tee it off and put one line back to your nutrient reservoir and then you tap your drippers off of that now the other important factor for getting um, an even drip rate is all your lengths of quarter inch tubing should be the same exact size. So I measured all mine out and I found what size worked for all of them and I measured them out. I think I used like 18 inch pieces for example. So every bucket in here has an 18 inch piece of quarter inch tubing tapping off of the half inch main line. Now that's another way, like I said, that is going to ensure you get even distribution of water. And I did test this prior to putting my plants in here. I put empty buckets around the system and I ran the system and uh, measured the the amount of water that went into each bucket over the same amount of time and they all had an even amount of water so it worked great so you can see here this is a good example of the uh, drip tube set up how I have it so I have the this is the 18 inch piece that comes into the bucket I just drilled a little hole through the bucket so it kind of doesn't I don't have to worry about it flopping out of the bucket and then I ran it to a quarter inch T and I split it off into two fixed rate drippers. And the reason I did that, you know, kind of you can see one goes on each side of the, the main stalk of the plant and it gives it a little more even nutrient distribution that way. Now I opted to use fixed rate drippers here because I've tried the adjustables in the past and it just seems to be problematic with some they go out of adjustment some are getting more nutrients some are getting less and so i found that using these uh, two gallon per hour dripper heads are the perfect amount for me so that's two of those two two gallon per hour and so when you know how much uh, gallons per hour to expect out of this you can know how long to set your timer to give them a specific amount of water nutrients by you know calculating down to how many uh, how much water per minute you would get out of by doing that. So 
My grow medium that I chose to use here is a 50-50 mix of perlite and coconut coir, which does a great job of providing drainage and also uh, retains the proper amount of moisture. So you're probably wondering what this is, and I'll show you some videos of that in a minute. But basically what I did, I set these buckets up. You can see it down here. Uh, there is a drain off of each bucket that is at a height of two inches. So that's kind of like a typical Dutch bucket setup. I made a reservoir at the bottom using, you know, river rock or, you know, whatnot. I'll show you in a bit. But there is a possibility that this can retain two inches of moisture in the bottom and in the event that it gets higher than that it will overflow out now i don't water them enough to ever accumulate down into the bottom of that that is just a fail safe for rain and everything mostly but i water three times a day throughout the day and that seems to be working great you can see my plant here this is a carolina reaper and it is doing just fantastic with that amount of water nice thick stalk on this plant and the plant does not appear to have outgrown the bucket in any way okay so these barrels you see behind me here those are my nutrient reservoirs those are 255 gallon drums that i picked up from somebody local in the area they are food grade they used to have you know pickles or something like that in them some type of food item and uh, that is a very important thing. You definitely want something that's food grade. And if you're curious on how to know if it's a food grade plastic, it will have a number stamp on the bottom. It's usually in a little uh, triangle. And it will have either a number two, four, or five. Those are all food grade uh, plastics. Now, to use a setup like this, of course, you're going to require a little bit of plumbing. Some uh, bulkheads will be in your future to set this up and i do have a video on my channel as well on how to install a bulkhead if you need to know how to do that but let me take you here and show you my plumbing setup so first of all i did connect the two barrels together here using a larger diameter i think i used a one inch line on that one i did put a valve in here so i can shut it off and and isolate the barrels if needed and a union where i can separate the barrels I put this tap off here uh, that is mainly for if I need to drain the tank or if I have some other plants that I want to give some hydroponic nutrients to uh, I have the ability to do that I did prop it up on some some blocks here just to keep it up elevated a little bit off of the ground uh, mainly so I could you know run my plumbing off of the bottom of the barrel so I could get the absolute most amount of water out of these barrels versus if I had tapped into the side of the barrel when it's empty it will always leave you know a certain amount of water in the barrel and I want to be able to completely drain these barrels out the bottom if I need to so the next part of my setup here uh, this is where my output is here and so I did put a valve on there where I can shut that off so I can break this union to take apart any controls and stuff beyond that that I need to. Now what I have here is this is a solenoid valve. So that opens and closes this line when it's powered on. And when it's powered on it opens this line up. And beyond that these are the two valves for the lines that I showed you outside. This one runs to my main feed line and this one is uh, for filling the tanks. And so if I wanted to fill the tank, I would close this one, open that one, then power on this solenoid valve, and I can run water into the tanks right from outside the garage. I don't have to do that. Optionally, I could you know, run it back in and fill it through this line as well. Either way would work fine. As far as a pump, this is what I have. I have a submersible pump, which you can see here, and it is connected to a length of flexible vinyl tubing and that pump just basically sits on the bottom of my nutrient reservoir here and that tubing then connects to a barb fitting that is up inside the tank so it connects on the opposite end of this line here and so that way the pump can be completely within the nutrient reservoir and then it pumps out to my line there so for the lid i just drilled a hole through for my cord plug to fit through 
and I put that on and I do put something around this hole to keep the dust and things out but both my barrels have lids they actually have like a locking lid but it wasn't necessary this part just sits on there just fine okay so as far as controls what I have here is this is my main power line coming in it comes to this box I did opt to put a switch on there to just disconnect the power if needed but basically this is an outlet here on a GFI for safety precautions and I have an interval timer here now this interval timer can be set to very short periods of time a typical house timer for like a light or something usually the shortest intervals you can find is like 15 minute increments which is way too long for for what I need here so uh, I found this timer on Amazon I'll put a link to the product in the description of this video if you're interested but basically you can program this to uh, run for just a minute or two at a time even seconds you, you have the capability of doing that but minutes was sufficient for me so I have my pump set to run three times a day 6 a.m. 12 and then 6 p.m. so at first I started out you know I, I've uh, increased the time interval uh, based on you know the size of the plants at first I was watering them about three minutes each interval so for a total of nine minutes per day and then I've gradually increased that to four minutes per day for three times a day and it seems to be working good I never get any wilting of the plants or anything like that everything they look they look great and so uh, based off that I think I'm watering sufficiently so out of this timer then what I did was I made it uh, a, a little pigtail cord here from an old extension cord I wired that into this plug here so this cord powers these plugs these plugs go to my pump and down to my solenoid valve so when this timer kicks on it powers on my pump and opens the solenoid valve down there and lets water flow out to my system now one thing I'd like to note is that when purchasing a solenoid valve for this you know for this setup I'm using 120 volts standard house power so you need to make sure that your solenoid uh, is capable of handling 120 volts and also make sure it's one that is for use with water as well some of them are for air and various other things oils and whatever but make sure that it specifically lists for water because otherwise the diaphragm might not seal properly and you're going to end up with like a constant drip out the other end because the gravity weight of the water coming down this tanks will push water out to the drippers if you don't have a solid shut off there so make sure you get the right kind of solenoid valve i'll put a link in the description to the solenoid valve that i purchased off of amazon as well so it's important to note here that this system is what's known as like a drain to waste system so there is no you know recirculation of the nutrients what gets sent out to the plants it just drips into the coconut coir the plants absorb it and that's it it doesn't drain through into a drain collection system and pump back to my uh, reservoir or anything like that so that's good because then your plants are always getting full strength nutrients it never gets diluted down with like a dutch bucket system eventually you're going to have to drain your nutrient reservoir and put fresh nutrients in it because you don't know what you know did they use up more nitrogen or potassium or phosphorus or whatever micronutrients and so you're always getting 100 percent strength of nutrients by feeding this way okay so that's it really uh, basically to in summary I have a nutrient reservoir it runs off of a timer it opens a solenoid valve turns on the pump the pump runs out to a line that makes a complete loop around all my buckets that's very important complete loop around all the buckets I have equal lengths of quarter inch tubing tapping off of that half inch main line and then I have the two drippers positioned on either side of the plant. I used a medium that is coconut coir and perlite, a 50-50 mix. And I'm gonna give you a quick look here at how my buckets are set up. 
to accommodate uh, proper drainage and everything. You may have heard of like a Dutch bucket setup or a hempy bucket, and that's pretty much what this is. But let me give you a look at that real quick and show you how I set these buckets up. To put these buckets together, you are gonna need some PVC pieces. Just use a short piece of PVC and a 90 degree fitting. Sand off the burr on the other end. This will help you later. Mark your bucket two inches up from the bottom and I used a one inch paddle bit to drill my hole. It does help to go at a high speed when you're drilling this hole through the bucket so you don't fracture the plastic and it makes a nice clean hole. Then use these three quarter inch, uh, they're actually electrical grommets for conduit. Put that in the hole, put your hand inside the bucket and just twist the pipe uh, until you can get it to go through. It does take a little work to get this through but it makes a nice tight Fit, which is what you want and I chose to you know push the elbow all the way right up to my bucket depending on your situation might be different but you will also need another 90 on the inside of the bucket as well that's going to point down also and it leaves a nice little gap there now in order to create this void at the bottom I wanted a void almost as if like to create a self-watering type system here for a reservoir if any extra nutrients drain through they could sit down there for the roots to absorb later so I use these cheap colanders I just cut a notch out I've got these at the dollar store and then put it over the PVC pipe like that kind of keeps the entrance of the pipe protected then I just took a five gallon paint strainer put it inside the bucket and filled that with my coconut coir and the strainer helps keep the medium out of the rocks and the void in the bottom. Now last year I did try some DWC direct water column hydroponics outdoors and while I did get res good results from the the pepper plants I had good production uh, I had some issues with things like rainwater uh, the, the because the net pot sits in the top of this bucket lid and it's kind of open to catch rain and then you know you have your fixed amount of nutrients in there and the rainwater would get in there and it would dilute out the nutrients and then you know I was constantly fiddling with that every time it rained I had it you know get in there so bad it would flood the buckets over so the nutrients are obviously diluted so then I have to change the nutrient level and you know you're really not supposed to you know fill the bucket back up to a higher level than what it was previously because you'll drown the roots at that point so it it did have some complications i made it work but uh, it wasn't an ideal situation and the other problem i had with the direct water column is supporting the plants you really need to support them good because their their roots aren't anchored into anything and so once the plants got tall a bunch of peppers on them the wind was blowing them over and then i was fiddling with that all the time and so this setup works great the coconut coir gives them something to firmly plant their roots in i don't have any problems with that if it rains the rain can just wash through the bucket in fact you have to flush these buckets once every couple of weeks anyway so this mineral nutrient salts don't build up in the coconut coir so the rain is actually almost doing me a favor here to flush the buckets out for me in this situation so it works out really good um, and then after the rain stops you know they're getting they're getting fed and just takes right back off where it left off and so it's it's a really ideal situation for growing hydroponically outdoors this is the best solution i've found so far um, and it's been working great for me as you can see and I'll take you a walk around here and let you get a look at some of these plants and some of the peppers on them and you can see my results and see how great it's working so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please click the like button and if you want to see more be sure and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching